Hey everyone, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to tell you 5 reasons why RN5 V3 is a good sports tourer in the year 2021. I've covered close to 15,000 kilometers on my RN5 V3 and most of it is on touring rides. Uh, I own a BS4 2018 non-ABS version RN5 V3. This was one of the first couple of models to be launched and although most of you would say that around 5v3 is not a good for touring uh, in this video i will try and explain to you or convince you why the around 5v3 is still a good touring option for the year 2021 the around 5v3 is tagged to be a good beginner tracked bike so it packs a ton of power and it's super fun to ride on those straight long highways you know and it's also super easy to overtake long vehicles and it moves really quickly and swiftly so uh, i personally like taking them on straight long highways and when you're doing cruising speeds of say 100 to 125 kilometers or 120 kilometers per hour for long periods of time you don't feel any stress on the engine or on yourself it's a good cruising speed and it can handle it so this way it helps you cover longer distance in a shorter span of time it's light on the pocket since the bike is just 155cc, it gives brilliant mileage. There are rides where I have clocked mileages close to 50 to 53 kilometers per liter. Most of my other rider friends or biker friends do not believe this. Uh, they find it really hard to believe that the RN5 is giving such high mileage. But my other rider friends who own an RN5 V3 and the owners who are watching this video who own an RN5 V3 know that it is capable of giving such high mileages when ridden in the right way and uh, because of this you wouldn't find yourself you know fueling up the bike at every petrol bunk uh, i usually fuel it up uh, once full tank and it can do about 520 to 540 kilometers on an average this yes it does depend on how i ride the riding conditions and the road conditions but on an average uh, 520 kilometers on a full tank uh, is what I get and I generally don't ride too harsh I'm really smooth on the gears and I shift between gears between like you know 6000 to 7000 rpm I don't you know redline it and push it really hard on the lower gears or something like that and uh, my bike is regularly serviced I use uh, engine I use a good engine oil and I lube my chain very frequently basically I, I take really good care of my bike so yeah the economy is good and it's light on the pocket the engine on this bike is super smooth uh, usually on every bike I find this rough spot uh, when I say rough spot I mean there is this particular range of rpm where the bike vibrates so uh, i know a lot of you guys can relate to this uh, but i haven't noticed any such rough spots on my bike i don't find any vibration of any sort on my bike unless i like redline it or push it too hard uh, on the rpm there is no uh, vibration and the gears are like super smooth so the bike is super refined the reason why this matters a lot when you're touring is because if there is constant vibration that's coming from the bike you will easily get tired and irritated and this can make you hate your touring experience or can give you a bad experience bad overall touring experience i have done tours of close to 615 kilometers on a single day that is i start at like 6 a.m in the morning and then i'm back home at 11 ish in the night yeah the link to that video will be in the icard and in the description handling corners it is an absolute pleasure to ride this bike on curvy guard roads it will give you 
I cannot tell you how well this thing handles on curvy routes. Like one has to experience it in order to feel it. I cannot say it in words. I have covered most parts of the Western Ghats in Karnataka on this bike and I've also done a lot of other rides which have a ton of curvy roads like Koli Hills, Yerkard, Uti, Hosle Hills and um, you can check all those videos out, uh, all those motor vlogs. Uh, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the iCard and in the description. Yeah, so I basically prefer to take my bike on such rides like you know where the roads are very curvy and the roads are good. It's an absolute pleasure and it gives me a ton of happiness when I ride my bike on such roads. Uh, one has to feel this to understand how good it handles the corners. Or wind blast rescue. So wind blast is probably the second most probable cause why you feel tired after vibration and we already spoke about the vibration part. So constant wind blast when you're riding at high speeds on highways will make you tired and irritated very quickly and in this bike the wind visor or the uh, visor is really good and even at high speeds you wouldn't feel wind blasting on you and i have personally upgraded the wind visor on mine and i put a double bubble visor on my bike although the default one is super good um, i prefer this one i've done a couple of more mods as well that I'll leave a link to that as well in the iCard and in the description. So these were my top 5 reasons why RM5 V3 is still a good sports tourer in 2021. I will also talk about a couple of reasons why or on what conditions you should not go for the RM5 V3 for a sports tourer or a tourer in general. I can think of two particular reasons. The first reason is if you travel with a pillion rider. It's going to be hectic. Please don't do it. Please don't go with a pillion rider on an R15 V3. It is literally a nightmare for the pillion. There's nothing to hold in the back. There's no guardrail or anything as such. And it's high, it's elevated, so the pillion feels really uncomfortable. And it's uncomfortable for the rider as well. Every time you brake, the pillion will slide and come on to you shout out to all the neighbors who actually want that but coming back to the point having a pillion when touring on this bike is a nightmare i took my fiance for a ride uh, a 275 kilometer ride and after that ride she decided she's never going to sit on my bike ever again and i don't suggest you keep a pillion rider when you're going for touring rides on the rm 5 v 3 if you usually go with a pillion rider do not buy this bike However, if you're a solo rider, you can pack your bag and mount it on the passenger seat with a couple of bungee cords and it'll sit like a rock throughout the ride. I usually do this and it's probably the best location to uh, keep your luggage. The reason too why you should not or you would not want to buy R15 V3 as a tourer is if you prefer off-roading or trail riding, this bike is not meant for it the suspensions are relatively harder than you should it should be and you will feel every bump and nook that your tire goes through in your wrist and shoulder and it's very painful and i would not suggest it basically this bike is track bred so you cannot take it on trails or off-roading however if you don't have a choice and uh, you have to take it on bad roads uh, it still does well because it has good amount of ground clearance uh, it's just that you will not feel comfortable doing it so these are the two reasons why i would say uh, the rn5 v3 is not is not would not be a good choice for you and the last reason i wouldn't say it's a con it is left for the viewer to decide um, most of the rn5 v3 riders complain of the riding posture I agree that uh, doing really long rides of say rides of uh, more than 500 kilometers in a day will be kind of challenging but I have overcome the challenge. I have custom fit a CBR handlebar on my bike and 
now it's turned from a track bred bike to a sports tourer and i've done really long rides like i mentioned i've done 615 kilometers in a day and that had like all types of road conditions where there was uh, off-roading there was a bit of gravel there was ghat roads there were straight highways and uh, it was a really good ride i'll leave the link to that video also in the icard and in the description so this is my long-term ownership review of the rn5 v3 and if rn5 v3 is still a good tourer in 2021 that's it for this video if you like this video please consider subscribing and please feel free to watch my other videos which are mostly based on touring uh, the mods on my bike and much more and happy new year stay safe stay blessed